For those of you who were in American Literature 1 with me in the fall, you should understand that our explorations this semester won't be quite so clearly chronological. We will be doing a bit more bouncing around the timeline, because emerging from the devastation of the Civil War, we see much greater overlap with these ideas of literary eras and movements. Roughly speaking, we can think of 1865 through 1917 as the realist era, a time when many authors committed themselves to a more objective and quote-unquote accurate portrayal of the world around them. However, within that broad movement, we see several distinct yet overlapping branches. We'll start by focusing on regionalism, which is often referred to as the local color movement. If you're familiar with the American Romantic era that spanned the first 60 years of the 19th century, you'll remember that there was often an emphasis on creating a uniquely American form of literature, that the second generation of Romantic authors wanted to do more than simply imitate the British and European Romantics. Coming out of the Civil War, we see a form of literature that is in fact uniquely American because it places a primary focus on the accurate portrayal of the developing regions of the ever-expanding United States. The people, the customs, even the weather of the New England region were in many ways radically different from those in the southern region and those in the Midwestern region and those in the newly quote-unquote discovered Western region. However, because there is so much interest in the place and the customs of the place, the writings of the local color authors are often lacking in action. The emphasis on plot that was so important to the Romantic authors is supplanted by an emphasis on setting and character. Who they are and where they live is much more important than any sort of adventure. Adventure takes the character away from their comfortable home. The local color authors wanted to keep their characters within those comfortable homes. As a result, aesthetically, we see a great shift from plot-driven fiction Think of Cooper's Last of the Mohicans or Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, for example, to character-driven fiction. This shift, in many ways, has remained with us throughout the 20th century.